Hey everybody, welcome back to another video on my channel here and today we'll have a look at Nuxt's Use State Composable, what it's exactly doing and how it can help you, why should you use it, no matter if you use server state rendering or not. Here we go. When it comes to state management, Nuxt is not really opinionated. You could use any kind of plugin, module, package you want, be it Pina or Harlem, nano stores or whatnot. But today we focus on something that Nux brings on its own already, helping you with state management out of the box and that you can use without much extra cost because probably you use it under the hood already. And it is the use state composable. So what it's exactly doing? Well, we have a look at that in our demo application as usual. So let's jump in straight away. This time our demo application is a little bit more advanced than usual, but it's necessary to show you the benefits. And I even brought something that I didn't tell you the solution fully about last time. So if you haven't checked out the video about the one view 3.4 feature nobody talks about, that might be a good scenario because we picked something up from there when it comes to hydration issues and how to solve them. We'll see in a second. First, the Nux config, very basic. We enable DevTools because they will give us a sweet little benefit here. We have an app.view just linking to two pages, to the index page and also to the serializable page. We have a look at that in a bit and then just putting out the next page here. We have some composable here called username and also that is something we'll check out in a bit. And we also have a Nux plugin. So Nux plugin, which also uses this username composable and that name here, which is a ref. Yeah, here we go. And logging something. That's what you might've discovered already down here in the console. Also about that in a bit. We don't check the serializable stra page straight away, but everything at the time. The index page, that is something that you might remember. Yes, the index page is from our last uh, video here. A little bit adapted, make call a little bit smaller, but in the end, it's, it's very, very similar. And we'll have a look at that straight away. Let's go and take a look in the browser. When we load our page, we see the usual things. Opening DevTools, we have some hydration errors as we had in the last video. And as I said, the problem is the randomness. So also when we load one more time, we see that here being a bit flaky, having first some values here, some random values and then changing them. And one solution to fix this is to not rerun that random function on the client again, but only keep it on the server and then transfer the information. So what we want to do here instead of recalling that again and again is we want to use use state to ensure our state is transferred over. Back in our code, we have this const list equals ref link generate random links. And the setup block or the setup function, if you don't use the script setup syntax, is executed on the client and on the server side, which means that random function here will be called also twice and the result, well, unless you're very, very lucky, no chance, are not the same. So what we want to do instead is we want to ensure to generate this only on the server and then transfer to the client. And luckily we can do this out of the box through Nux use state composable. So instead of ref, we use use state here. We tell, okay, it should be a link as before. And now we can provide an init function. So we get an initial value. Other than that, we could also set list the value to something else because since from now on it behaves like ref and we could even use a shallow ref here if we know that the value will only be changed by replacing it and not by uh, mutating it like some nested stuff. Also here, as usual, if you haven't heard about shallow ref yet, check out the video. There is a good guide about that up there or in the description as usual. And what we'll do here now is one more thing. We give the whole thing a key, say random length or something like that. The key here is very important because use state um, uses that key to ensure that there is a way to identify the data you send over. If you don't provide a key, which is also possible, then use state will simply use the location and file and um, the well, amount it was called in that file to figure out which use state call is. But I wouldn't leave it to that. I would rather set a link, which is the script. And if we save this here now and go back into our browser, we'll have a look what happens now. When we now open our application for a hard reload and then check the dev tools, we see, nice, great, no hydration errors anymore, they are gone. And that's because the Nuxt 
Use state composable transfers the data over. The function is only called on the server side when we initialize the value and the randomness is preserved, so to say. And in the Nux DevTools, we can even have a look here in that payload tab. We see under state, keyed state from use state, that's exactly what we used. We have this random links over here, and this is exactly what came from the server side. So it's also nice to debug these things over here. And yeah, you might have seen one more thing down here, data, keyed state from use async data. And as you might have noticed already, use fetch and use async data also need to transfer state from the server side to the client side if you use server side rendering. And they also use use state under the hood, which of course means that also there it makes sense to set a key. Otherwise, it's usually inferred from all the parameters you put into and the URL. That works pretty well for use fetch, for example. But also for use async data, it makes a lot of sense to define a key manually if you're on it right now. When using use state, it is very important that you make sure that everything that comes as a value in there and will be transferred from the server to the client is actually JSON serializable. So what won't work is using some kind of class, for example, anything that's beyond an object, array, or primitives. And I've prepared a little serializable set page here. And if you click on it, we'll see an error message that you might already know. Cannot stringify arbitrary non-pojos. I know, I know, it's a bit cryptic, but the idea is that Pojo is a plain old JavaScript object, right? And everything that is not a plain old JavaScript object can't be stringified, so can't be serialized. The LDR means don't use classes when you use use state or in general transfer state from the server to the client. Otherwise, we see exactly this error message. Luckily, it's not that tricky to track down because, of course, first <laughs> it will stop your app from running. Um, only on the hard reload, of course, otherwise it will work because only then the state is actually transferred, right? But um, yeah, it's also really good to see when you use classes or anything else that is not an object or array or primitive values. Okay, after talking about the serialization, you might think, okay, why should I use use state if, if I don't use server-side rendering? Why should I do that? Um, because there is definitely a case for that. Before diving into that, uh, I just have to manage any kind of state management solution will work, right? Finia is also totally fine, but for example, for tiny things you want to share across your whole application, you don't have to spin up a whole Pina store. So let's have a look at the plugin I've uh, shown before, a bit with server-side rendering, and then showcasing you some scenarios that help you also without it. Here we go. As shown before in the plugin, there's not much going on. We call that username composable, which we have a look at, and then we say hi from plugin name is and so on and so on. I also opened the server console because that will be useful. Here we see name is empty. So if name.value is not set, we'll just render empty and that's also fine. Now, it really depends how we implement that username composable. And we'll have a look now and it's not too difficult. In here, we use const name equals ref and then an empty value, it's fine, empty string. And then we have this username and say, okay, set name, we log that here. No problem. And if the name is not set right now, we want to set it. So this basically just works as a one off. And then we return name and set name. Very important, and I tell it right away don't do this. Don't do this. Don't use ref outside of a composable's global state. We will see why this is not a good idea, especially if you use server set rendering. If you don't use server set rendering, I would still not recommend doing this and uh, use use state again, but then it's a bit more acceptable. But as soon as SSR in play, we have a problem. And why? Well, I will do the following. We have this name page here, right? That name, name. And what happens is as soon as we open that, for example, on the initial request, that set name function here from the composable is called, and we have a name information here. And let's see what happens. What we'll do now is I will open the page. Let's say name I'll name Peter, for example, we'll open this. And when this is loaded, we see, okay, name Peter, name Peter, all fine. If we check back what happens in uh, our console, we see, okay, we have hi from plugin, name is empty, it's fine. Set name Peter, and then there was uh, no name before, so that's none. That's, that's totally good. 
What happens on the server side though is a bit interesting. Here we see, okay, hey from plugin name is empty, non, and then hey from plugin name is Peter, set name Peter Peter. If I now go back to home and fully reload the page, I don't show you the page, I show, show the console, we will have a look what happens now. And this is already weird. There is no name set at all because we are just on the plain home page. There's no set name function called. If we check the browser, there is even once again a hydration warning, a mismatch, an error, because this is not correct. And the thing that's happening here is that the old state is still in there. So by accident, we created shared state through all the users in the application. And why? Just because we put out that one ref out of the scope of the composable and doing server-side rendering and not using them in script setup and some components, but in a plugin, we accidentally caused that. So as soon as it comes to global state, we don't want to do that. So instead, we use use state and fix that right way. For this, we go into the use name composable, and I already said, please don't do this. Instead, we use use state here and give it a key like name. Oops. And then we have an init function say it should be empty string here. That's better. And what happens next is something that you might have seen as well already. Let's have a look at the browser. And here it says, oh, a composable that requires access to Nuxt instance was called outside of a plugin, Nuxt took the Nuxt middleware or view setup function. This is probably not a Nuxt bug. Correct. Find out more ads and then we have a link here. Um, that link is also in the description. So if you want to read about it more, no problem. But now we'll fix it very easily because we just did one tiny mistake. We should move this inside the composable because indeed we need the context and we get the context when we call the composable not before so the easiest way is because use state will figure out the data based on the key that we just move it in here and we're fine we could even go further and say okay we could even move this into a fully owned composable but for our use case this is not necessarily needed though if you use the use state multiple times in your code, it makes a lot of sense that these use state things, if you don't have like a set function or something, but just say like, okay, here's some state, do whatever you want, that they live in a composable like they do here or fully alone. And let's see what happens when we save this and when we reload and check the page. Okay, here we are, here we're good, nice. Let's go on one of these nicely randomly generated links now and have a look what's happening here. So we click, we see our name is not Peter anymore, but NXIGOOH5RJ. Well, definitely wouldn't name a child like that. Also not Peter, but hey, um, everybody's choice. And if we go home now, and now reload the page, let's see what happens. No hydration error anymore. And also in the console, it should look totally fine, and it does. Why? Because we have no shared state anymore. At least not shared as in between the requests. So the easy fix is really when you use global state, ensure that you use use state to make sure everything works. But the best part is, if we now have a look at the code, even if you don't use SSR, you can use state to share some global state. Because this is what's happening right now, even if we didn't really pay close attention to that. And actually, it's also what we want. Because in the whole application, without a Pina store, we can share the state. Let's see where that username composable is used and how it's shared. Let's start with the app.view, where we also use that username composable. And the best part is we show the name over here and we could even change the information right here if we want to. Let's say we would add a button to the header, right? Let's add a button saying a reset name and uh, maybe put that uh, here. And let's say on click, uh, we want to set name to the empty string again, right? Then we could totally do that without any issues because name is exposed, we don't have it as read-only, though we could, and it's changeable. And the interesting part is that this would change wherever it is used, so it really acts as global state. If we go to the browser now and say we click on link, we reset the name, we see the name is gone, even though we are at that URL, but it's gone. And it's not only gone in the app.view, but also where the name page is used itself. So with use state, you can really create global state around your application. And the best part is you can control how it's used. You can write a composable around it and it doesn't have to be a big Pina store unless you might 
reach for it at the point where you think like, okay, I have lots of options. Uh, we need like separate stores. We need um, different plugins, maybe some Pina plugins to persist some stuff and all is there. So once again, as I mentioned, there are lots of state management solutions and Pina is a great choice. I used it in quite some projects as well. But if you have tiny parts that you want to have as global shared state, especially when using SSR, why not using use state? Huh? Exactly. Do it. Try it out now. Do it! Just do it! Before we raffle away the ticket for Vue.js Amsterdam, and I'm sorry it's too late now to join, but there might be some raffles in the future too. Thank you for over 2,000 subscribers and not even 3.5 months. So I'm, I'm really honored. It's so amazing. Thanks for everybody sticking around, putting in all these nice comments, positive feedback, constructive uh, criticism, suggestions, and please keep them coming. Please, yeah, stay, stay tuned. I'll have lots of things planned for this year and I'm more than sure it will be amazing you will enjoy it. So I'm glad that you enjoyed the videos, you learned a thing or two and about all the comments. And if you notice that you didn't subscribe yet, it's your chance to do it now. So thanks for that. And now on to the raffle. And the winner is... Michael Pumo 6432, congratulations, you won, please just uh, DM me on, I don't know, X, Discord, wherever, send me a message, write a YouTube comment, I don't know, and, and then I will send you over the code. For everyone else, thanks for participating, thanks a lot for commenting, and you also won a tiny, tiny prize, which is a discount code for Vue.js Amsterdam, it is I really like Alexander Lichter, as you can also see here, right there, saving you a few bucks, so... I'm very sorry that I can't get a ticket for everyone, but um, at least you all had the chance and now you get a little discount if you want to. So I hope to see some of you anyway there. And um, yeah, uh, let's have a chat when you're around. Please uh, feel free to message me before, or say hi when you see me. Same for any other conference, of course. And now that's it with UseState. Once again, to summarize, amazing composable, very important, used by usefetch and usesync data under the hood, great for avoiding global shared state between requests, but great for declaring global state in your application. So next time we'll talk maybe a bit more about performance, maybe about Nitro, there are good things piled up. See you soon. Happy hacking folks and enjoy the day. Bye bye.